successful and shit like that. So uh, successful, like getting a good amount of traction and views, or or it not being a problem with editing or what? Um, just the view part, right? I want I want this to be successful. I turned this whole damn garage apartment into a damn studio, so hopefully I get something out of it. You know, oh yeah, man, turn out of sure. it. I mean, shit. What you got here is a lot of equipment man definitely i'm a big i'm a big 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 uh firm believer in utilizing what you got don't think i need to get this and this in order for me to be able to achieve xyz right mm -hmm. um like just for example just when i was working at the ymca shitty equipment dumbbells it's everything you needed and i did three competitions in that gym i didn't need no state-of-the-art uh I don't know la fitness or uh, equinox gym you know i just use what i had for the time and i made the most of it and i think utilizing what you have with the resources you have and just t uh, how do you say exhausting as much as you can until you're ready for the next step or financially able to make a bigger investment like that's just the way to go as, for, as long as i've been doing what i've been doing that's what i learned just utilize what you got you know. Perfect, man. Well, thank you for being on the show. Yeah. Um, I want to say, everybody, welcome to the Gotta Get Your Protein podcast show. First ever, Mr. Eric Rodriguez, guest special for today. Um, this guy here, we go way back, believe it or not. So I want to say thank you for being on the show. Of course, man. Um, so it, it's it's a pretty cool thing how we can like link up on certain you know things that we have in common, similar interests, right? I'm trying to build this brand. You are a brand. Right, you're a competitor. You're you compete in big shows, and yeah. I'm trying to work that lifestyle that you got going on. Right, so yeah. I want to show people that there's a different way how to do a lifestyle, and you got it in the more professional way. I'm mm -hmm. more of a laid back. You can do it if I can do it. You can yeah. do it type, and you're more like, hey, this is the science behind it. So it's two type of combinations mm -hmm. clashing together, which is a beautiful thing, and we can sit here and talk about it. Oh yeah, and so. I love talking about this, dude. Like, <laughs> can you scoot up a little bit? Yeah, yeah, just a little bit to the mic. To the mic. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. a little bit closer. To the mic. I mean, I learned over the years. As long as I've been doing what I've been doing, or being in fitness or business, there's three conversations you're gonna have with your friends or even your family. It's gonna be about their health. Oh, I gained weight, or uh, <laughs> I need to lose weight, or the holidays are coming. It's it's a constant conversation. Or I'm broke and yeah. I need money. Or I need to get an extra job. Definitely one of those. those it's definitely yeah. one of those two conversations. I think yeah. I said three, but those are the yeah. top two conversations you're guaranteed going to have daily or consistently with anybody. And so facts, bro. You know, um, it's just a, it's just something that's always on everybody's mind is their health and their income. You know what I mean? And uh, I mean, where we're at in our generation, fitness, health trends are in, implemented in everybody's life compared to, I believe, like our parents and our parents' parents, which is why like my parents and even my grandparents um, kind of have unhealthy mindsets or, 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 or habits because we grew up, we're growing up with information at our hands and finding it cool to you know be retro or dress a certain way or work out right and back then it just was not it wasn't as common so mm -hmm. somebody either is either doing zumba jogging watching what they're eating somebody's doing something right right and whereas and that's in our generation whereas our parents and our parents parents it wasn't like that you know and they, they didn't have access to a lot of information how we have exactly right? they don't have youtube where people can YouTube, just walk on facebook stuff. or google especially you know like just the other day i was looking up like wh what's the what's the danger in refined sugars and the shit that i saw it was like diabetes heart disease this and that i was like holy cow and back then they're over there drinking coca-cola like it's a refresher like something that hydrates them and did a little did they know it turned into diabetes that tortilla especially now. in our culture man like it's just a lot of it, tortillas. it's just it's just traditions passed down and that's if that's how you grew up that's the those are the habits you're going to be instilled right. in, you know and that's and what shows up on the dinner table and at you know lunch breakfast your mom's making all that stuff and mm -hmm. so you know what's common right mm -hmm. so you kind of pick up on those traits and stuff like that. But the thing that you can do to get yourself out of that cycle is one, identify that where you're at with your health and notice your environment. Like, oh shit, it's my environment that is making me like this. Right, right, you know right, what I mean? Right. Um, 
and I and being aware of it and once you're aware of it then you can figure out well, can I do something about it because some people aren't even aware that that they eat processed food all day or you know I mean I talk to people daily uh, what do you call it um, consultations about oh, okay. training and what they need help with and I'm telling you man like most people eat typically two day two times a day okay. right and I'm very big every client I work with I'm like you got to get three at least three and most people their typical routines are a big lunch big dinner they they they, they don't they don't eat all morning right and so because they don't eat all morning they don't realize that they're hungry that way when it's finally time to eat lunch their body is just craving all this stuff and then they just kind of go grab whatever is convenient or whatever right man and so, oh man and maybe you can relate to that you know <laughs> that's me right now and so, so but the thing is you're doing you're fasting for a purpose you right, know you're right. eating a certain amount of time uh meals a day for, with a purpose some people are just doing it because they don't that's just how their body it's just a routine you know right 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 so i talk to these people they're only eating two times a day a big lunch big dinner and then i'm like well why okay so what you're missing breakfast why can't you get breakfast i don't have time to cook okay it doesn't mean that you can't get a breakfast my number one simple fix for busy for busy people like that simple fix protein shake and a piece of fruit done why because you need to get your nutrition in and if you have something simple and a good meal and first thing in the morning then your lunch is not going to be as crazy or or heavy you're gonna have you're gonna have more of a controlled lunch okay and thus you'll have a controlled dinner and thus you'll be in a new pattern compared to the same one that kind of you know made you gain all that weight sure. you know? now in between breakfast and lunch let's say you get a little hungry a lot of people hit up the vending machines they'll go mm -hmm. get like a nutri-grain bar or something like that mm -hmm. is that something that's advisable or what can you do like you said something earlier maybe some sparkling water or coke zero or maybe some nuts what's something that you can do for the people that are getting into that pattern so what I've read that it takes two weeks to build a habit. Mm -hmm. So within those two weeks, people are going to mess up. Mm -hmm. What's the better way to mess up? So it's identifying, okay, I'm a snacker. Okay, cool. So right. if you get into your, your three meal regimen, great. Then it's identifying food swaps. Okay. I'm very, very big on food swaps. Like Explain. You go to the vending machine for a candy bar. Okay. <laughs> well, instead of a candy bar, a best food swap would be a protein bar. Okay. Why get a candy bar that is full of sugar and fats when you can get something that's just as sweet and actually has good quality nutrition in it? Okay. That's just a simple swap. And I give all my clients a variety of lists of snacks that they can do, that they can eat more of. That way they don't have to go for that candy bar or the bag of chips, right? Right. Um, and simple snacks like fruit, popcorn, protein bars. Uh, I, when it comes to nuts, I prefer pistachios because they're you can eat a lot of them. Dude, and I love very low. pistachios. Dude, I, love, I, can, I, I can do a bowl. And honestly, if you do a bowl of pistachio, that's probably like less than it's probably like, it's gonna be less than four hundred calories. No kidding, bro. Yeah, man. Or a, a, a bowl of cashews that's gonna be almost six hundred six hundred calories. You cashews know? got more calories. They have they have more calories in them. But do they have more nutrition? They have just about the same. But usually when it comes to weight loss, it is going to involve your calorie intake. Okay. But I'd rather right, you right. eat a bag of cashews or a oh. handful of cashews than a, than a, cho a chocolate bar if that's literally what your okay. options are. You know what I mean? Right. And so overall, I like to teach everybody swaps and how to make conscious decisions wherever you're at. Whether okay. you are at the restaurant or you're at a gas station. Sure. You know what I mean? Knowing how to select your snacks or your or your... Or your nutrition wherever you're at just breaking it down and understanding why to make these decisions better than going with the regular stuff that we're used to you right know? okay so if you let's say competition mode right, right. before competition you're hungry we, we say snacks right good healthy snacks right can you give me a list of snacks that you would start snacking on for competition mode for guys that are getting in a shape for a purpose yeah so for me Last week, I was, you know, I still play recreational men's league baseball, right? But I messed up because I lost so much weight, so much water, and I didn't have the nutrients to pick myself back up. So I had no energy on the field, and it really, it mm -hmm. really hurt me in the end. You felt it. I felt it really bad, you know, out of a four hour game. So, but, you know, I kind of know what I'm doing, but I don't really have exact, uh, you know, expertise on what kind of snacks that can get me through 
stuff like that with strength and energy and nutrition that can get me through four hour you know games and stuff like that yeah the snack on yeah so, so my top something. my top three outside of what i just said protein shake popcorn i mean a protein uh, bar popcorn, popcorn. and <laughs> fruit outside of those uh i would say greek yogurt okay Dude, Greek yogurt so high in protein. Very like, high in protein. I like gr Greek yogurt. Uh, berries, even though I know it's a fruit, but berries are, you can have literally a cup of them or bowl of them. And again, it'll be under 400 calories, if not 300 calories. Mm -hmm. And um, what else do I put? So you put berries in the Greek yogurt? I mean, that's a great combination. You yeah. can do it separate, but shit, if you got Greek yogurt, which is high in protein, low in calories, and berries, which is low in calories and high in antioxidants, boom, you got yourself a great parfait or something like that. Like a Perfect. super nutritional filling snack right, right there, right. right? That's something I'm looking for. Dude, I like man. using that. I used to put, uh, I used to get like, um, strawberries and cottage cheese. Strawberries is a perfect fruit too, man. You could same thing. They're super low in calories. And you said strawberries and what else? Cottage cheese. Cottage cheese, man. That's another <laughs> yeah, one. I used to get a bowl of cottage High cheese. High in protein, man. Like oh, it was so like nasty when I first tried it. Not not the taste. I'm talking the texture is yeah, bad because it's very. It's weird. It's like weird little slimy soft, stuff. Yeah, soft. yeah. But then I put some splendid or some stevia or something mm -hmm. like. Um, of that fake sugar, yeah, um, oh, yeah. That, that's and then I threw in some strawberries, dude. That shit was bomb. That right there is an ideal. Another snack. Uh, cottage cheese was a big staple back in the golden era, like okay. Arnold Schwarzenegger's days. Yeah, yeah. They would eat cottage cheese, and their um, they did a lot of high protein, low carb. That was their typical diet. Very, very simple, structured, uh, yeah. simple nutrition plan, which is kind of like how I do things now. It's I don't overcomplicate it. I don't, I don't, I'm not very big on macros. I'm not very big on, uh, fad diets like keto or okay. pescatarian. Really? My thing is it needs to be sustainable. So if you could do it year round and not feel like you're depriving yourself. Oh, uh, okay. I like that. Then I it's like good that. to go because I mean, okay, let's say you lose weight fasted. Okay. You get to the goal. Are you still going to continue fast or are you going to like break that because you now want to start being regular. Right. And right. the moment you break that pattern your body's going to kind of gain weight because it's now doing something different i have experienced that i'm mm -hmm. not gonna lie i've experienced it maybe twice i've lost maybe like 12 pounds 13 pounds then i get to the point where i'm like depleted i'm like dizzy lightheaded so i'm like okay i gotta start some more some some food right i gotta start eating some more then when i start doing that i'm like eating some sugar and then that really like implodes me and i'm just like why yeah i just lost 13 pounds mm -hmm. but then i gained 15 like that makes no sense yeah so, so that's usually what it is. Uh, it's because you're doing something for so long and you're and you're forcing your body to do something that it doesn't want to do. And then when you do something different, it'll, it's not, it's not, it's not like you're getting weight, like fat, right. but you're still going to put on the water and stuff like that. So overall, my biggest thing is to, you got to have a well-balanced diet, uh, nutritional regimen or however you want to put it, know your protein and your carbs and just kind of move your body as often as you can you know it doesn't have to be lifting weights but overall knowing what to eat and being in a and making good quality choices for yourself is going to take you a long way compared to doing a crash diet and then stopping it and then going back into your old routine or into some different routine and then your body's gonna gain weight or something like that um it's just it's just how it is um so if you're gonna go if you're gonna go down a certain diet trend Make sure it's something they see yourself doing long, uh, sustainable, long. Because if not, then um, then it can shoot you in the foot if you you know you know uh, change it up too fast. You know. Yeah. So don't do no crash diets unless it's sustainable. No, exactly. Uh, I mean, because it, it, it's yeah, you you'll get results. Right. But right then you'll away, but you'll get you'll gain it all back once right. you go back to your normal eating habits and stuff like that. So let me just give you an example, right? Okay. So, and this is something I've gone through my whole competition journey or whatever, right? So, I went from, I started officially, I started taking my nutrition seriously at 197 pounds. And then in eight weeks, I dropped to 170. And I had Holy carbs cow. in every meal. Low, low, amount of, low amount of carbs, but I still had carbs nonetheless, right? Nonetheless, right? You said eight weeks? Eight weeks. Holy cow. Yeah. Two months? So, I, all I did was just literally take my nutrition seriously instead of, Oh, I have some alcohol here. I'm gonna train harder because I always like Damn I it. dropped I dropped 15 pounds by 
cleaning up my eating and having some alcohol, but then I stayed at only losing 50 pounds. And then once I took out all that extra stuff, because I did have a purpose to lose the weight, so I had a timeline. Uh, once I took out all the junk, the cheat meals or whatever, and the and the alcohol, um, and just stuck stuck with my nutrition, stuck with my exercise, boom, week 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 after week after week, result result result, right? And simple, simple, and my, simple. That my meal plan that my coach that had me on was nothing special. I'll tell you what it is, literally for my first four or five weeks. Okay, and it's a we're gonna get some insiders. Beautiful from coach. meal plan, right? Because every coach needs a coach. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and the reason why I because I did my own I did my own programming for my up until first competition. No, my first six seven competitions. Oh damn! I did my first time actually working with a coach, telling me what to do because I've been so busy with my own work. Yeah. That I just need somebody to tell me what to do, and I'll plug it into my schedule. Okay. Instead of me trying to figure it out and oh yeah, okay, yeah, I gotta yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like just it takes out the thinking process. So anyway, the first four to six weeks. Egg whites, I would have about eight ounces of egg whites with one cup of white rice. That's a lot of food. It's a okay. lot of food. And, and you get it, you buy the egg whites already made or you're there? Kind of uh, like no, dude, the yolk. I buy the cartons. <laughs> I buy the cartons. Uh, we now shop at Sam's. We buy Whole Foods, not Whole Foods. We buy wholesale, wholesale worth of food. Because <laughs> we would go to Kroger and H-E-B Weekly. Yeah, and now yeah. that we now have a household, me and my girlfriend and my parents, um, got a lot of mouths to feed so mm -hmm. instead of just doing it weekly go to sam's i buy literally i buy the proteins and the carbs the little snacks that i do buy is pistachios and these omega nuts they have like uh raisins and nuts and that that's literally all i buy at the at, at sam's and obviously what's in the house is what gets eaten sure unless they unless my mom or my brother buys something else but anyway <laughs> so eight ounces of egg whites with one cup of rice a lot of food right off the bat you know what? I'm sorry. That was my second meal. My okay. first meal was a protein shake and a half cup of oatmeal okay. with almond Mi milk. Mixed in? Um, no. So what I did, yeah, I could have, but I enjoyed yeah. just drinking the protein shake because I love the oatmeal. Okay. And the way I made the oatmeal was because it was oatmeal with almond milk, not okay. water. Ooh. And so obviously that was the calorie intake. But I, to make it more like an enjoyable thing was I put two packets of Splenda and some cinnamon and man i'm telling you like the almond milk instead of water is a game changer and man that was like a dessert i looked forward to that every morning every morning right when you woke, woke right up. when i woke up maybe an hour in uh into my day i'd have that breakfast the protein shake and the oatmeal great thing then my second breakfast was the eight ounce of egg whites and the cup of rice then <laughs> the third meal this guy here is, is getting into it later. man it's good it's, and man it's crazy because i was already thinking good. about it how good it is i was eating it and obviously you can have a diet and it can be bad but it's about how you cook it okay you know what i mean yeah because if you want this to be sustainable you want to enjoy what you're eating and not feel like oh it's another bland chicken or it's yeah. another bland whatever yeah 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 so i'm just a salt and pepper kind of guy i ain't gonna lie to you hey yeah it's simple too but if you but, enjoy it but i put some butter in i gotta put butter with the oil the butter and the oil and that's why i tell a lot of people too man i you you save yourself like three or four hundred calories by taking away oil and butter God, like it's it. a lot of calories dude would you rather eat that or would you rather it be somewhere that doesn't make you full oh man you know what i'm saying i want it to taste good and make me full i don't know if there's a thing but there is because I mean, I stay full, and, it, okay. and the food that I'm eating is good. It's just you got to make certain swaps, right? Okay. So the biggest swap you can do for butter and oil, spray. What kind of spray? Just any spray, canola oil, vegetable oil. It's it's all zero calorie. If it says zero calorie, it's good to go. Really? Yeah, man. Really? I thought olive oil was always good for you. I mean, yeah, all that's good for you, but if you look at the calorie, if you look at the in nutrition, the oil? it's 120, uh, 120 calories per tablespoon. No shit. And you shit. can't tell me you're putting no. that much oil. <laughs> you're probably putting, putting like that much oil. No, not that much, but like you're probably putting that much oil. And no, that'll... Oh, no, brother. I, I, I don't like it when the when the chicken sticks on the pan, so yeah. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more so mm -hmm. that I can kind of move it around. So instead of... Oh, like, my goodness. You'll... I'm sure if you change it up, I don't mean to be pointing like that, but if you change it up, <laughs> if you change it up probably this week, because if you cook all your food with oil, uh -huh. you take away that one variable, okay. you just go to sprays, you'll, you'll be saving yourself probably like 400 calories a day Jesus. per meal, man. And that'll take you a long way. Just like when people cut out Cokes, 
mm-hmm. they lose like eight to ten pounds same yeah, thing dude, i noticed that like the bigger guys that like drink a lot of sodas that are diabetic and the doctor like kind of gave them a shock like hey you need to stop doing this you you need to get in shape that's the first thing they cut out and sure enough like 15 pounds later two weeks I'm like god just damn. because of that one little variable mm-hmm. that one little variable would take you a long way whether it's getting an exercise in or or swapping uh uh um oil with a spray little things like that will take you a long way man it's crazy it's crazy yeah. and it's simple just like all the variables so i took out which my and my and and my the way i go about my fitness is a little bit extreme it's okay. like more of a mindset dedicated whatever anybody can do it but for me it's about simplifying it for yourself to not feel overwhelmed because sure. i because i do got a lot of going on right, but right. i really do want to stay on top of myself right okay so that right there will help and go a long way when it comes to flavoring your food and still cutting calories, right? Okay. So, so it'll be bland, you would say, or or what do you put in as like your dude, flavor? I, mean, I use Lowry's in my seasoning, Lowry seasoning, and, yeah, and or uh, lemon pepper or garlic powder. Oh, oh dude, lemon pepper is fire. You know what I used to do? Um, that was really, really, really good. You guys out there might want to try this. Um, I think my mom did this. I don't know why she's like uh your, your chicken's kind of bland like do you want something in it i said no not really she's like well i'm gonna marinate mustard in the chicken with mm-hmm. lemon pepper mm-hmm. and lime down and so she put it in a bag cut off all the fat all the chicken the night she left it overnight in the refrigerator the next day she cooks it and the chicken looks orange don't get me wrong and you're scared like man what the hell's mustard chicken and and uh lime and key limes and, and lemon pepper spice is gonna taste like and sure enough, bro, that thing was bomb. Mm-hmm. It was bomb, but and it did have oil in it. <laughs> that's, but it's, it's it's fine, man. It's fine. Like, but dude, it was good. It's best to cook your food at home compared to going out to eat, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like that's a simple thing. Um, so mustard and chicken. Mustard, mustard's a great condiment because it's zero calories. Yeah, exactly. You know? And it's got the uh, vinegar and the acidic acid mm-hmm. that can kind of break down foods exactly, and stuff like that. Man. So it's good. I love mustard on my stuff. But uh, you're you're a, you're a mustard hot dog ketchup guy. No, dude, I'm a mustard on my hot dog, and that's it. The, really? Maybe some sauerkraut. Uh, I like the Chicago dogs whenever I go to a hot dog place, which is a sauerkraut and mustard. That's literally all. I don't like, I don't like ketchup extreme. on my burgers or my mustard or, or my hot dogs. I just don't for some reason. <laughs> that's on my fries. I love French fries, but yeah. I'm a simple. I don't like a plain hot dog, but I'll just put a good line of mustard for some okay. reason. You know what I mean? Well, mustard is good. It's not for anything nutritional either. It's yeah, just yeah. because I just I like that. I, I like that. Yeah, I like the way it tastes. But um, <laughs> but yeah. So the the oatmeal, the egg whites, and then my third meal was uh, it would be ground beef with sweet potatoes. Okay. And obviously, I would go with the leanest, which would be like ninety percent. Sure. Um, that was amazingly good, man. Eight ounces of ground beef at that, and about four to six ounces of sweet potato. Same thing, another full, full heavy meal, you know. Just just the ground beef and the potato. That's mm-hmm. it. And you just kind of like. I mean, you know, obviously, head. I cook the ground beef a certain way. I put bell pepper, seasonings, yeah, okay. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The sweet potatoes, I just cook my sweet potatoes. I, I chop them into like, like chips and I boil them. And if I want to add flavoring, I'll put cinnamon. If not, I'll just eat them. They're good the way they are, honestly. Or some salt, you know. What if you get like a big old piece of... I think is iceberg lettuce. It's kind of like the long piece of lettuce. I don't know what the name is. You know, romaine or whatever. Yeah. I have to look it up. And you kind of like wrap it and make it to like a taco. Like that's a lettuce wrap. Yeah. That, that no, shit's fire. That's a great. That's a great alternative for a taco. Honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, have you ever tried that? No. Yeah, dude. All the time. I that's whenever fire. I was so when I was in the beginning of my training, when I was just balance eating, cutting. I went to Velvet Taco with my girlfriend and her family. And so whenever I go out to eat, it was typically my mindset was, oh, I'm gonna make conscious decisions wherever wherever I'm at. Sure. So I went to Velvet Taco and I ordered this taco that had lettuce wrapped, healthiest choice I could make. You know what I mean? Um, so that's definitely something. Or corn tortillas, they're a lot lighter in calories really? and carbs. Yep. I honestly thought corn tortillas were the worst. It's the, the flour. flour. It's the flour is the worst. Yeah, that's what I feel uh, like. It corn is. tortillas, you can eat like you can get away with four and be like under 400 calories. Oh wow. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. It's just about looking at the nutritional facts and finding swaps. So if you're somebody that's a taco eater and you want to kind of cut down but still keep your tacos, 
so, and you like flour tortillas, then go from flour to corn or go to with the iceberg lettuce. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can still enjoy your tacos and get results. You know what Interesting. I mean? Interesting. Yeah. Simple swaps. Simple swaps. That's what I'm all about, making swaps, man. That's that discipline side of us, bro, that we don't have. Yeah, man. But you know. I won't say it's a discipline. It's more of the knowledge side. That you know too. What I mean? That too. Because um, you didn't know that tor corn tortillas were okay. You know what I mean? Now you know shit. Now, now you know. Can, now, now, you, you, now I know. Now the people know. And, and now you can make your cool. chicken and your beef without oil, oil and make tacos. Right. And boom, you know what I mean? You got yourself a fully balanced meal that's fair in calories. You know what I mean? And protein and carbohydrates. Sure. You know what I mean? Wow. Um, so what's it called? What else was there? So I had the ground beef, the sweet potato. Then I would do chicken, about six ounces of chicken and sweet potato. Okay. And then my last meal was five ounces of salmon with, uh, I think, a half cup of rice. Jesus Christ, that's six meals right there. But six that's meals. when you're competing to gain weight or to cut? To cut. Ooh, that okay. was me on my, my, my journey to losing that from 197 to 170. That was my first four to five weeks. 170, yeah. So I was eating six meals. Obviously, I was active. I was doing cardio and training. But, dude, I was I was eating good, dude. I enjoyed. The only time I did not like my meal plan was when I was, like, the last two weeks of the competition where I had to eat dry ground turkey and that was probably the only thing I didn't like. The the dry, dry ground, ground turkey. Yeah, that's about it. Who no, who who kinda like let you know about that? Was that one of your coaches that told you or your coach told you this is what you have to eat at mm -hmm. the end of the competition? Yeah, so I would or send them my updates. The I would send them my updates. And then they'll be like, Oh, okay, good, keep going. Cause if I'm still losing weight, there's no point in changing it. Okay? Right. And then one not and I think at any point I did not lose weight. They just changed up the meal plan because it was getting so close. Okay. So they would just change up my meal plan. Okay, here's your meal plan. And then I see it. Okay. Like, there's, there's nothing more for me to tell them other than the only thing I asked of them was like, okay, the ground beef, I tried it for a week, not liking it. Yeah. Is there any alternatives I can do? They said, yeah, you can do cod or chicken. Perfect. Okay. Cod, I love cod. Super, right. super. You can eat like five, ten ounces of cod and the calories are very low and the protein is very high and 10 ounces of food is a lot man you'll get really full off of that i think uh for for people like me who have a big appetite don't think that's a big meal but when you shrink your stomach then it turns into like a big full meal so just yesterday i was like out playing golf right and on the weekends i like to play yeah. golf and shit like that so we're out there for four hours five hours hydrating drinking water but I'm like, man, I don't have enough time to go home. So the first thing I did was go to the Chipotle. Yeah, good choice. Good and choice. so, but it wasn't such a good choice because the shit that I got in it. What'd right? you get? You know, I already got like the rice. I got extra rice, some beans. I got chicken. I got veggies. I got sour cream, the queso, and cheese. So that's really not healthy. But you know, like stuff like that is just like when so i've been shrinking my stomach lately and then i finally ate the whole bowl by that by the end of the bowl i was like damn i can't really eat that much anymore and so i was proud of myself there but i wasn't proud that i killed it all so i was like oh man but what is it that we can do to shrink our stomach while we're trying to get into that into that you know deficit where 10 ounces of chicken is full enough for us like it is for you so your your stomach is a lot smaller than mine because you intake your food intake is a lot smaller uh -huh. so you shrink your stomach and so when you eat stuff like that you're full and you're satisfied me i eat the, i have to eat double that and that's not good and that'll make you full and satisfied right yes. now let me ask you this okay you go for how many hours four hours before you had chipotle yes okay when was the time did you eat before you golfed I did not because it was like in the morning. That's where you went wrong. Yeah. If you would have eaten before you golf, then you would have had a more controlled Chipotle meal. Oh. See what I'm saying? Or okay. if you would have had a snack with you while you're golfing yeah. or a diet soda or uh, sparkling water. You see how like little things, it's not about shrinking your stomach. It's just about being consistent with your food intake. That way your cravings are a lot lower. It's about losing weight. It's about feeling satisfied and not having cravings or... Um, curving those cravings i guess you could sure. say right because hey we have a craving we'll eat it trust me could have avoided the uh, and sour cream, cream and the cheese yeah. and all that shit by eating before you played golf then you would have had a controlled a controlled lunch and then you know things like that but also um shrinking your stomach right and getting yeah. into the routine it's just about getting into the routine of my biggest thing is getting into the routine of three meals a day okay three meals a day focus on that then once you once you hone in on that 
then you can you know start focusing on protein and macros and carbs and stuff like that but so for the people out there that don't know what is macros and micro uh, macros and macronutrition yeah macronutrition sorry macronutrients Micro micronutrients uh can you explain that in your version so the way i understand it is um our our nutrition intake is based off of uh food sources right your protein your fats and your carbohydrates okay and pretty much you need 60 percent uh 60 percent protein 30 percent carbs and 10 percent fat for the most like that's a basic basic uh rundown for a meal plan right okay. and you can always adjust those variables you can either have the same amount of protein the same amount of carbs and then a little bit of fat or more fats you know it's just, it's just about how you adjust those uh food sources right mm -hmm. um and those numbers you know i need x amount of proteins x amount of carbs and x amount of fats a day to get to my goal whether it's gaining weight or losing weight right so okay. uh that's how I can put macronutrients. It's just those are your food sources. No matter where you go to eat, you're going to get a protein, a carb, and a fat. Okay. You're going to get one or all, you're going to get two or all three for sure. Like that's just how our nutrition is 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 based off of and um okay so one more time explain the percentage of what needs to be where and where or what you need say, to get in. So just for anybody I would say 60% of your plate needs to be protein. Protein, okay. 30% needs to be carbohydrates, and 10% needs to be fat. Okay. Now, what the hard part is, is identifying your proteins, your carbs, and your fats. Sure. Because it's a full right, list right. of protein, full list of carbs, and full list of fats. Because people think carbs will make you fat, or fats will make you fat. And that's, what the, mm -hmm. that's not the case. It's the quality of the food that you're eating. So there's a carb, and then there's a bad carb. So sure. you got yourself a potato, that's a good carb, or you got yourself french fries which is a bad carb because it's cooked in grease oils and fat but okay. still it's still a potato right but it's because it got much more in it where a potato is a single ingredient and that's the number one thing i can say is if it's a single ingredient food it's good to go meaning if it's an apple mm -hmm. if it's a pear if it's an onion those are single ingredient foods if it's salmon it's just salmon if it's a chicken breast it's just chicken breast when it becomes not a single ingredient food is when you start putting oils on it uh, uh i guess seasonings just extra calorie things or or uh condiments on it condiments you know that's when it becomes not a single ingredient food but i'm a big condiment guy I'll tell you right now yeah man and condiments I mean, who doesn't love condiments? But there's swaps for those too. So if you got yourself um, regular ketchup, you can go to like no sugar added ketchup, or you got barbecue sauce. There's no sugar added barbecue sauce, and they'll save you like a good amount of calories just by making that simple swap. You know, okay. again, going back to swaps, man. I use I use sugar free barbecue, sugar free ketchup. I use low sodium soy sauce for my uh, for my condiments. I use mustard too. Um, sugar-free syrup whenever i make my protein french toast or protein pancakes <laughs> you know what i mean um and I've, I've i've literally i never did it for anybody else i didn't try to experiment i just brought my stuff with me and i yeah. shared it with my friends right, right so right. i got two or three stories story number one i made my friends protein french toast with low with uh, sugar-free ketchup they enjoyed it okay it tasted like regular they tasted like regular french toast tastes like regular syrup but they don't care or know that it's lighter in calories right wow source number two um story number two is uh i had friends come over for my birthday in may and we cooked them burgers and stuff like that and i had my ground chicken and sweet potato my ground beef and sweet potato and i put my no 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 sugar added ketchup on my stuff and i put it in the table and everybody was using that with their french fries and they're like, oh, shit, this is uh, no sugar add. Like, this is light. You know, it's a healthier ketchup, whatever. I was like, Interesting. Yeah. They're like, oh, man, it tastes just like the same. Wow. Third story, um, I'm at my bar my birthday barbecue. Again, I'm cooking all this spice. <laughs> like you have a stuff. birthday every three months. Yeah, man. <laughs> you know, it, was just, it was just May, man. May was, May's always a good month. Yeah, it's May's our, a good it's month. It's me and my girl's anniversary. It's my birthday, you know. And, and you got movies coming out. Anyway, so I'm barbecuing for my friends. I'm still sticking to my nutrition plan because yeah. I'm like two weeks away from my competition. Okay. But again, just because I'm cooking fajitas and french fries doesn't make me want to eat it because I, I, I'm on top of myself. I have my food with me and I was drinking Diet Cokes like crazy that day too. <laughs> um, but anyway, a good friend of mine that drinks sodas as well, 
Yeah. She was like, man, those Dr. Peppers you got, the, the zero sugar Dr. Peppers, they taste just like real Dr. Peppers. Yeah. So now her and another friend changed their, their Dr. Peppers to that. Yeah. And I'm not saying <laughs> like that they have great results or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. But, but it's it. just little things like that. Like, oh shit, I can, you know, I can make a healthier choice and it still tastes as good. So yeah. overall, it's always about finding swaps and things like that to make it, to make it feel like you're not on a diet or to make it feel like you're not on a, some strict regimen man because i you want to enjoy your food you want to enjoy your results you want to enjoy the journey and the process overall yeah it doesn't have to be this do, just thing where that's this it's annoying it's a chore oh, i can't wait till the i can't wait till 12 weeks from now so i can just go back to eating the way i want to eat <laughs> you know what i mean and yeah. it, it's got to be it's got to be when you get to that end goal now you know how to maintain because you now you know how to eat now you know how to, now, now you know how to have balance okay right and um that's ultimately what when you when you understand your nutrition and you start to understand how to make better choices for yourself whether you're at your weight whether you're at your goal or not mm -hmm. once you develop that mindset of how to understand your nutrition once you get there and you do it like a reflex and not make yourself do it that is when you ultimately make it okay because you're gonna have that habit instilled in you and once you once that's a part of you it's going to be with you the next day the next yeah. week the next month and then time's going to go by that time's going to go by with that habit still in place imagine the results that will, that will come along with right it. right right so let's let's bounce a little bit on the mindset uh, i want to ask you a couple questions about mindset and a regimen and stuff like that so one of my questions is you know speaking of mindset most people don't really start doing anything until they have a reason to so like for a an doctor instance appointment or a doctor appointment or let's say for a wedding right people don't really start working out unless they're like man i'm about to, i'm about to get married let me get in shape for that because when i start taking pictures it's a one-time thing a lifetime thing another thing me gearing up for baseball season for you competition for others what motivation do they have incentives like, is that what you're saying yeah some incentives. type of incentives exactly so what for the average person that says, man, I want to get in shape, I need to get in shape because I look, I don't look good, I don't feel good, I just not where I want to be at. So me, I started gearing up for the incentives and for the show because I want people to know that a guy like me who hit a wall that used to be in shape, that's going through the process and is showing how it's going to be done, you know, with expertise like you coming in and kind of teaching me and showing me so that way I can give the knowledge to the people that, you know, that need to know stuff like this. What incentives do you give for people that don't have any incentives? Or oh, I'm sorry, what tips do you have for people that don't, don't have, have any incentives? So for people that don't have a wedding or they don't have a competition or they don't have something to get ready for, but they still want to get results. That is, that's a lot of majority of my clients, right? Yeah. So for that, I would say it's about instilling good habits, right? Because for me or for you, if we know that, hey, we got to get ready for this in two months, then it's easy for us to say, okay, I can stop alcohol. I can start junk food for two months. We're going to go to the gym. Right. We can be more regimented. Yeah. But if you don't have that incentive <laughs> there and it's just uh, uh, you're, you're, you're shooting with no target or whatever the case may be. I like that one. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. What do we shoot? So for? with that, yeah, with that. It's just going to be about learning habits and it's about yeah. having a good coach or somebody telling you, okay instilling the nutrition habits that way you can those type of people and i have majority of my clients are the lifestyle like okay. i just teach them how to make good alcoholic beverage choices how to make good snack choices how to make good out when they go out to eat dinner choices that way the more that they're more mindful of what they're eating and consuming and still following a regimen then over time they will see progress right yeah now if they hug buckled down and went full force which i would want you know you ideally would want every client to do they will see results in a month or two just like i got results in a month or two sure. it just takes about take away all the distractions okay. and not everybody knows how to do all that right? Oh, right so it's about how to work with the distractions i guess you could say okay and when you're able to make mindful decisions day in day out those those um habits will carry you along the way throughout your journey okay. and over time you know you might lose 50 pounds in three months instead of i mean sorry and six months instead of three months 
but still you you still got there nonetheless right right, right. That's, that's all that matters you know so for those that don't have an incentive it's just about learning how to be mindful and making the best decisions you can day in day out that way it'll compound and be, and build up to the success you want to be okay um so what, what what kind of coach are you are you are you a coach that screams at them motivates them talks to them are you a therapist as well or let's say bouncing off the incentive part do you scare them like do you say hey if we don't get this done by the time you're this certain age with your habits you're gonna be a statistic with heart disease and this and pancreatitis and blah 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 blah, blah liver so like what kind of coach do you think you are so i do have like first time clients like they get yeah. a little nervous like, i don't know who you are i love <laughs> they look around I like two baby weights I love to make people comfortable, right? Because I, because I know I, I've been through different phases of fitness. I've lost a lot of weight. I've gained yeah. weight. I've, I've built muscle. I've leaned down. I've tried low carb diet. I've tried high protein diet. I've tried um, the balance diet. I've, I've, I've done different phases of fitness with heavy lifting and 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 high intensity and. I mean, I don't say I've did it all, but I've got a lot of experience, right? Mm -hmm. So because of the experience I grew up with. Or, or even over the years, I can know what you're going to go through when I put you through this certain type of exercise or when you eat this certain type of way. Perfect. So yep. I just want, I'll, I kind of mold myself into them, right? I don't yell at no, none of my clients. I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not a drill sergeant, but I just want, I do. <laughs> imagine. So when we come into imagine the gym, Rocky being a drill sergeant. Nah, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, the I, chillest dude ever. Yeah. <laughs> I can't see him being a drill wrong. sergeant. Like when I'm working out with friends, yeah, we'll, we'll shoot the shit with, you yeah. know, we'll, you know, we'll go back and forth. One but, more rep. Come uh, on. You got this. No, no, that. So, no, not. not kinda, push it. Let's go. You know, when, when, I know, when I know when somebody needs that push, then I'll, then I'll be a little right. bit aggressive. But other so than that. you're good at reading the room I'm with good people. at reading the room, exactly. Right. So, you're for example, coach. example, let check it out. Mm -hmm. You're coming in for a workout. You're a beginner. Yeah, I'm gonna warm you up. We're gonna do a couple of exercises. I hate doing basic exercises like burpees and shit <laughs> like that because uh, I just that's just not me, right? So I uh, want you to enjoy the workout. We're gonna do some simple movements, cool movements, and you're gonna you're gonna have a good experience, right? Yeah. So I tell this to all my clients, like when they come in, especially my AM clients, like my five AM, my five thirty AMs are a little tired. Jesus, this guy so, starts early, huh? Yeah, man, I start early, dude. And I'm pff, I've been at it today since five or oh my god, I'll explain that to you too. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I'll tell, we'll warm them up, and then we'll get into the the nitty gritty of the workout, and then okay. I'll cool them down, right? Okay. Because I know what it's Ooh. like. I'm not just gonna put somebody into a a quick work a, a high. A, crazy workout and then oh our session is done i'll see you later and then they're right. all wobbly and stuff no i i understand what it's like you know okay. what i mean so get them warm enough get the body waking up within the first five to ten minutes and then we're going to spend a good depending on how long the training with them um a good 30 to 40 minutes with the real work and then okay. the last 15 maybe 20 minutes i usually cool down with abs or yeah mostly core you know what I mean? That's that's cooling down. I would think cooling down is like stretching. Well, you know, in a sense, stretching, yes, it's ideal. But I like to cool them down because I do whenever I whenever I train abs, it's just on the floor. I yeah, don't do yeah, machines. Yeah. Yeah, I just yeah. do different variations of core uh, of ab exercises. And the reason why I say it's a cool down is because you're not overexerting your body, but you're mm -hmm. laying down. So in between sets, you can you can, can just kind of chill and lay down. Mm -hmm. Okay, next set, do your set. Okay, to relax. And then once we're okay. done with the ab training, <clears throat> we're done with the workout, and you're on the ground, and you yeah, feel a little yeah. bit refreshed. You know what I mean? Okay. That's a that's a typical little breakdown for some of my sessions. Um, especially when I'm at the gym working with other trainers and the music's loud and you hear all these mm. trainers with their clients boots, boots, and I boots, and it's just boots. for me I can't even think and yeah. if I feel like my client is huffing and puffing and if I can't even hear them I'm sure that they're feeling overwhelmed with all this energy going on okay. so I'll take them to a quieter part of the gym to where it's more uh -huh. serenity okay, okay. because I've had clients it's so much going on, and they 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 have to quit the session because uh because they're too overwhelmed. That's happened they're, before. They're out of breath. Out? Not walked out, but be like, yeah, hey, can right. we cut, can we can we end it? Can we end it early today? Yeah. They're nauseated. They're mm -hmm. you know what I mean, out of breath. And normally, when I can tell someone is kind of getting into that that fatigueness, mm -hmm. I'm like, all right, let's go to this side of the gym, and and we'll, we'll, I I can tell like, okay, we're not gonna do any more like 
exerting movements, we'll start cooling down. We'll start doing some core work, things like that. Okay. So I like to read people and work with them where they're at and and go based off that. Now, when it comes to the hard talks, you know, none of my clients really came at me like, oh, I didn't lose weight, this isn't this. Because honestly, every if it's a one-on-one -on -one session, um, we have talks over you know, progress, nutrition, what the week's like, kind of, you know, kind of just consulting during the workout. And then usually at the end of the session, I'll let, I'll leave them off with what to work on that day or that week or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because it, it, it's coaching overall. I see it as coaching and not trainer. You're not, you're not hiring me for badass workouts. You're hiring me to change your mindset to change your habits right okay. and i learned that i learned that f i have two coaches man yeah um i have a business coach and then i have my c trainers that tell me what the okay. you know what i mean and it, it's true co a coach doesn't need a coach and i've got myself very very far up until this past two years um but now it's just because i worked with what i got at the time beginning of what we we're talking about worked with what i got what i learned took me very far mm -hmm. but i was kind of I wasn't growing as much then. Yeah, I was yeah, still yeah. making good progress, and I was implementing new things. But once I was start able to invest into help, even better, man. Okay. Um, it, it, it's just, it's just, it takes away all the guesswork. Yeah. You know what so I mean? don't be afraid to spend the money on the right coaching, on the right advice, the right nutrition. Is don't be afraid. Don't say ah, I can't afford it. Don't say I can't afford it say how can i afford it right exactly because you're investing exactly. in your own life you're investing in your future mm -hmm. not i can't afford it how can how I can i afford it be right. resourceful trust me man you'll be resourceful when those jordans drop or when those beyonce <laughs> tickets drop <laughs> bro you'll borrow money you'll, you'll borrow money yeah so when it comes to yeah. you know Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, man. I've, I've literally signed up people like that because okay. I've reached out to them. It was perfect time. Oh, man, I was thinking about it. Yeah. And yeah. They, they see the value. They know I need this help. And there's some people on the fence. And I'm, I'm never twisting anybody's arm. I just ask the right questions as far as how important is it to them. And if it's, hey, if it's not that important, you know, I'll, I'll check in with you later on. That's fine. Sure. No hard feelings. Um, but it, like I said, it is on everybody's mind. Like I said in the beginning, it's something that is. Right. And and at the same time when somebody gets to a moment that they need to do something then that's when they'll that's up, you know what when I mean? they yeah and yeah, it's okay yeah. i mean people go through different phases it's a psych psychological thing it's a a priority thing as well just like people will prioritize buying those beyonce tickets or those jordans <laughs> hey man it's it's about seeing the value you know what i mean yep. and um and yeah man i mean it's just it's just overall when it comes to the helping people or the business of it and um and even somebody being that's looking in on hiring somebody it's a uh, you know you want to make sure that definitely make sure you're hiring hiring somebody that's good because there's so many cookie cutter fitness yeah, people yeah, out yeah. there that's boring as shit mm -hmm. you know this uh, something i wanted to get away from the from the industry on the youtube side right i want to be somebody that is not the cookie cutter guy who's already jacked and in shape no disrespect mm -hmm. to anybody out there who's been there but i kind of want to see like a different side of mm -hmm. fitness right if i can provide that type of fitness where hey this guy was in shape but now he's big and now he's losing the weight but can explain the process i think it turns out to something different mm -hmm. that people can see and be an inspired because i want people to inspire think and this is where I understand where most people are coming from. Because people think, oh, man, if I want to get in shape, i got to work out six times a week. Mm -hmm. i got to meal prep my food. Mm -hmm. And my goal is to debunk yeah. all of those gym myths. Same here. You know what Same I mean? Same here. Because I don't want fitness to be, or health and fitness or getting results to be something to be scared of or be intimidated by. I want it to be something that you can see yourself doing just by applying certain things mm -hmm. that you enjoy. Differently. More you know fun. what I mean? I'm more of a fun guy. Like I won't run on the treadmill but for you'll 20 play minutes. Sports. Yes, exactly. I won't run on the treadmill for 20 minutes. But you'll see my ass playing basketball for three hours. You know, mm -hmm. that's something that I enjoy. And I don't even know how much calories I burn, but I know that I'm busting my ass. That's right? all that matters, man. Don't worry. I mean, I so I, I, I tell everybody, guy. don't worry about those numbers, man, yeah. because those numbers. The only things we should be stressing about is our work. And our family life right mm -hmm. everything else i feel like is just falls to the wayside right mm -hmm. so if your work pays your bills for your family or whatever right so 
If you're stressing about work and money and your family, why do you want to stress about what you're putting in your body? How many calories is it? Just know, eat your protein, eat good quality food, and be active. Simple. You heard it from the man. That's you like, got to get your protein. That's like the bare bones <laughs> minimum to even get started. Yep. Then once you get in the routine and you start plateauing, then you can start looking more in depth on, okay, calorie counting, macro, or yeah. uh, programming your workouts, things like that. But just... I Those definitely three definitely three. want to talk about that in the next episode yeah. if we ever get yeah. relink again because yeah. this was a great episode. So I mean, this is kind of like the beginning of what's going on, and so you're a great coach. I'm not gonna lie to Appreciate you. It, you know, as the business side, you're learning as a young entrepreneur. So I applaud that, and you're learning how to sell it. You're learning how to live it. And you're learning and you're showing it right. Oh yeah. So this this guy here, I mean, he, I could tell he he could sell me some 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 workout <laughs> regimen. Yeah. So. Where, where can we find you at, right? What, um, what's your hourly, uh, I want to see, not saying typically what's your schedule like, but, you know, for a client that's out there that doesn't know you but knows me that can, you know, I can attest to this, where can they find you and what's your hourly or if that's something you want to discuss, you're no, welcome sure. to. Uh, if you want to reach me, Instagram, Facebook, my Instagram is rocky.rdz. Okay. Um, Dot .rdz. And... Uh, What's it called? Facebook, first name, last name, Eric Rodriguez, Eric with a C. Okay. And, and, that, and that's a picture of you and your physique, right? And your shorts? No, no, no. What happened to that, that one? No, that's on my Instagram. Uh, my Facebook okay, is okay. me in a suit. Oh, it's oh, me in a suit right, with the metal. That's right. A um, little this bit more. Dude. Yeah, because I have family on there and yeah, shit like yeah. that. You know, <laughs> even though I have family on Instagram, but. Right. Um, and then as far as my services go, man, I've. I have group training, I have semi-group training, I have one-on-one -on -one training, and I do online coaching, right? Look at that. So I help people in different varieties, different price ranges. So it all, you know, it just depends on what the person needs mm -hmm. and what they want to start with overall, you know? And that's why whenever, yeah, I can I can share with you, I mean, literally, I, I couldn't share with you my price because it's a long list of uh, mm -hmm. options, but it comes down to a consultation call okay. to see what you need help with, how much help you might need, and then like pl you know, uh, plug you into the right program that might suit you, you know, okay. and things like that. So, so you work a lot through the gram and Facebook. That's where usually you contact or your clientele. Besides word of mouth, like social media wise, that's where you go. Yeah, to. Facebook, Instagram. I don't, I don't TikTok yet or like yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> YouTube. I dabbled with it, but it's not. Yeah, for sure, Instagram and Facebook are my go-to socials. Okay. So this guy has group training, one-on-one -on -one consultations, and other varieties. What's stopping you guys? Get with this guy. He he's breaking down, like he's man. Phenomenal. He gains weight, loses weight, gets in competition shape, and you should see how phenomenal he is. Now, the last thing I want to talk about, well, last two things I want to talk about is your competition. What are your? How many competitions have you entered? And how many times have you won or what have you been critique and what have you learned and what is something like that you can like give a feedback for <laughs> like, right. what's your physique what's your weight yeah. what's your idea who do you compete I, against and we'll go i love I, I just love talking this stuff bro like <laughs> it's just it's just uh it just flows out of me so naturally because mm -hmm. it's because i just want i want i just want everybody to understand right just okay. like how you do right all right first question is how many competitions have i done yes Man, so it took me. I compete in the WBFF. It is okay. not the NPC or IFBB like you see where the big bodybuilders go to. Okay. It is a separate federation, similar to bodybuilding, but we're not as they're they're not as big like that, like Jay Cutler or Ronnie Coleman, right? Okay. It's more of a modeling look and fashion, right? Uh, okay. Now the reason why I got into them, this is a quick side story, is because a lot of the big Instagram influencers back in the day, like 2011, 2012, they got exposed through this federation and they mm -hmm. built great careers out of it okay. because of the networking and stuff that comes with it. And then now those that started early on, they're like, they're just doing their own thing now. Like they're still fit and they still do the thing. They don't compete as much or at all mm -hmm. because you don't really get much out of the competition aspect. You get more of what you do with it, right? Okay. So that's kind of what I saw myself doing is just using it as a platform to inspire, engage, and network really, right? So okay. that's kind of why I started competing. And I chose them because of this one person that I followed. I was like, I want to do what he did. And I just saw myself not doing NPC. And I point at this because I know it's Jay Cutler. <laughs> and um, yeah. 
Um, I don't know what I was thinking back then, bro. I just I don't honestly, know. my designer, I to, I drew up a mock up, and he's like, man, let's just put a regular guy instead of guys. Oh, I know for sure. Uh, so I was like, but the reason why, me, guys. but the reason why I didn't go down the NPC, the IFBB, <laughs> who you typically see, those are the the bigger names, the famous people, or they get the bigger prize money, um, is because I knew what it take to get to that level, mm -hmm. and I wasn't willing to do those things because it just didn't line up with my morals as a coach and there's nothing okay. wrong with it and obviously it's about like peds and things like that right okay, so we're talking about the trend and all that stuff yeah okay, all okay, that okay, okay. you know um yeah you're all natural 100 percent 100 percent perfect um so then a lot of these normal people can relate to us right because mm -hmm. we're natural you're natural and you're not actually having a substance that can help you recover faster and say god how's he doing mm -hmm. and i'm doing the same stuff he's doing because i was that i was that regular person that said oh i want to i want to take what they're taking like the, the supplements Did you really? the way to do you know what i mean like oh, yeah, yeah, no yeah. i'm talking about supplement wise ah, okay, you okay. see in the magazines oh they're taking that protein they're taking that creatine and they're mm -hmm. eating like this and they're training like this i can do that <laughs> so i did that and i got there and then it never it never not once discouraged me to be like oh man now i know i gotta get on that level i see what i gotta mm -hmm. do when i got there i saw that i can get there and i saw okay i might not like look as big as they are but i still got here nonetheless i still look good mm -hmm. you know what i mean and so because i was tricked into thinking hard work good nutrition good supplementation will get you there competition wise it got me there but a lot of people are leaving out a lot of big names or comp competitors are leaving out that that last variable yep. which can be the ped use which is yep. nothing wrong with it it's just as common as marijuana or alcohol it doesn't make you a bad person i just i was misled but mm -hmm. i because i wanted to i i just don't see myself getting into that into that um how do you say into that realm only because it just seems like too much to be another thing to be uh to keep up with mm -hmm. you know i got my nutrition i got my training i got my i got my supplements yeah. and then to get a part of that and then to when you get off of your stuff as far as i know you still got to take other stuff to counter yeah, the other yeah. stuff and it's just too much for me yeah. you know what i mean so i feel like it's a whole another science you have to figure it out it before is. you and I destroy to, your body and i listen to a lot of it too and it's like i'm like damn people are just taking this for this to yeah, counter that yeah. and i'm just like that's fine it just, it just doesn't entertain me I, and i like and i'm okay with it right mm -hmm. i'm okay with going to these competitions knowing i might get smoked but as long as i got as long as i my journey was good and i look good and i can uh inspire others great that's so all. you even in your league I would say they still have unnatural athletes mm -hmm. there. They do. There's Damn. some. There's some athletes that are natural, and there's yeah. some that are unnatural. And, and again, nothing against them. It's just my my personal uh, preference mm -hmm. on how I want to go about it. Do you yeah. know what would be you know what would be legit if we can make a league that's all natural? They do. They do have those. <laughs> they do have those. They're not big because they don't. Yeah. They're not because as they're not as defined. They're not, they're not as, they're as, not as sexy as yeah. them. You know. But for me, as I'll a competitor, kidding, I'm I'm <laughs> as a competitor, uh, I just, it's about what I do with it for myself and my life. I'm not letting a win right, or competition right, right, define right, right. who I am as a, as a person, right? Or as right. if I'm successful or not, um, which is why it took me seven competitions to turn pro. So you, and, you have and, a pro card in in this in federation, that, in federation, in this federation okay. yeah, and then so seven competitions minus I did do one NPC show, so that was my very first show as an NPC. Um, so I would say eight competitions, seven in the WBFF to turn pro, and then I've done the Bahamas, I've done Las Vegas, Florida, and then I just got done competing and beverly hills so seven plus four it's what, 11 yeah uh, 11 competitions now crazy story your question was first question was how many competitions 11. Mm -hmm. um three a year two a year i would say about two a year okay two a year 2020 obviously that was a crazy year did not compete that year mm -hmm. now the crazy thing is my my physique was I, w I knew my physique i got it in shape i knew what i needed to do up until i turned pro okay now after my pro i feel like my my progress has been digressing because either don't get me wrong, I'm fit, I get it, yeah, you know, all that stuff. But from what I see as a competitor in the pro level and what I used to bring as an amateur, it's, it hasn't been clicking, right? Okay. But I know for a fact that this coming August when I compete, I'm finally going to figure out that formula that I've been missing because what I went wrong was when I turned pro. I'm gonna bulk up, and I got. I went from I competed at 177 or 175, and I 
took uh, like eight months off and I gained like to 215. Mm. Oh, I'm gonna bulk up and then I'm gonna do the same thing to cut back down. And I did. I lost the 40 pounds to my pro debut, but the because I lost it so fast, my body didn't look the way it looked when it turned pro. Mm. So whatever, competed, did fine. I was like, I'll do it again another time. <laughs> gained the weight yeah. back. Cut down real quick. Body still didn't look the same. Oh, it's fine. I'll, I'll figure it out another time. Gained the weight back. Brought it back down. Oh, you know, you know, I, I looked okay. Didn't bring what I wanted to bring, but it was good enough. Or for me, it was still fit enough, but wasn't what I'm trying to get to. Cool. Gained the weight back. Then this past competition took me a while to take it serious. Got serious. Got good results, but still didn't look the way I wanted to look. Right. Again, since turning pro, it's been. Getting to a subpar physique, gaining the weight, getting to a subpar physique, gaining weight, getting to a subpar physique, gaining weight. Now, this past competition, excuse me, I lost the weight, got to a subpar physique, and I took two weeks off. And this, I was going to tell you the story earlier, but, mm -hmm. um, okay, so recently, this is my first week back in training. Good. So, I went from, I lost, I went from 197, like I said, to 170, okay? In eight weeks. In eight weeks. Damn. That's pretty damn good. Yeah. 30 pounds in two months. Yeah, man. Hardcore. Yeah, man. And That's so, something I want to do. If you can let me know how to do that, bro, I'm in. And I'll tell you, man. I mean, okay, aside from the cardio and the training, and I told you my meal plan. Yeah. Um, I loved the meal plan. I loved it. Okay. And I was so full. So when they took it away, the oatmeal, and they took away the ground beef the last two weeks, mm -hmm. I couldn't wait to get back on the oatmeal, and I couldn't wait for the ground beef. So when I got done with my competition, yes, I had alcoholic beverages, <laughs> and I had desserts, man. But once I got home from my trip, I got back on that original meal plan. Mm -hmm. But in between those meals, I had cookies, I had McDonald's, but I still stayed on my regimen, I still stayed on my cardio, and I was, so I was eating clean and eating dirty. And still doing this. I was doing the same thing plus the alcohol and the and the junk food, right? Yep. So I went from 170 when I did my first check in two weeks later, I went from 170 to 190. Ooh. Right? Now, do you think this is a question, do you think I gained twenty pounds of fat or do you think it was just water and bloat? Truthfully. Were you lifting? I was lifting. I was, I was doing okay. the same regimen. I was. Just, I think maybe 50, sixty percent of it was muscle, and the rest was water. I would say so. Typically, when you get done competing, you're so depleted. You're like a. You're like yeah. a raisin. Once you fill back up with water and and regular food, you're gonna gain the weight back, right? Just, just like a just like a crash diet, right? So Jeez. I did not gain. I did not gain twenty pounds of fat because this is what happened. The variables that I added was the junk food and the alcohol. Okay. The, uh, the exercise was the same. The food was the same. Once I took away those two variables, kept the nutrition cleaner, kept the exercise still going. Monday, I was 190. I gained 20 pounds. By Thursday, I was back to 180. Oh, damn. Okay. So that, that just shows you that the, the moral of that story is when you take a break from a regimen mm -hmm. and you see your, the scale go up, that does not mean you gain fat. That just means you're just gaining water and sodium and bloat. Sure. Because the true indication of fat is when your pant sizes go up. Right, right, right. Inches. Inches, exactly. Yeah. That's why I don't like doing a lot of stuff on the scale or uh, focusing on the scale. I like to focus on the waistline. Gotcha. So okay. people do that for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Oh, I gained 15 pounds over Thanksgiving. No, you didn't. It's just water. Just get back into your regimen, and I guarantee that that weight will come back off. Now. Yeah. If over Thanksgiving you went up a belt loop or a pant size, then you <laughs> then you gain some, gain some weight. But other than that, it's always just bloat. So that's the more of that story. Okay. Now, again, back to me trying to figure out find that that physique. I am now at a good striking distance to where I still have eight more weeks, but I have a good starting point now compared to losing the twenty five to thirty pounds. Right. Yeah. Now I only need to lose like five or six pounds. Jeez. So I have really? five, I have about eight weeks to lose about five, maybe ten pounds more. And that's plenty of time for me to finally get to where I've been wanting to get to. Um, and I believe the reason why I've been trying, I've been having a hard time finding that groove is because getting older, metabolism changing. Mm -hmm. And and that's why I had to hire somebody finally. I was like, you know what? I'm tired. I'm tired of trying to figure it out for myself. Let me see what I can learn. And honestly, from the coaches that I hired, Team, team Dynasty, they did nothing special with me. It was just me remembering how simple it was protein carbs regimented doing your training that's all i did in the beginning and that's all they had me doing now 
you know what I mean? And that was my ultimate lesson was do exactly what you've been doing. It's just I was being, I was too relaxed on myself. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I, yeah. can, I can have some wine. I can have some champagne. I can have a dessert. It's fine. Ah, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And then I wasn't losing any weight or I wasn't getting leaner. And once I put my money where my mouth was, and I was like, all right, well, I'm paying them. I don't want to. The meal plan says this is what I got to eat. So there is no snacks in between. Right. But luckily, I'm very busy that I'm always go, go, go. Mm -hmm. But I drink a lot of diet sodas in between, a lot of sparkling waters. And that's how I kind of keep myself in check. Um, but your question was how many competitions? 11. My experience, that was my experience was I knew what I was doing then. Then once I turned pro, I, I, I just couldn't get that right balance. I probably gained too much weight. But now I'm, I'm finally after since 2018 I turned pro so since then i'm finally finding a good groove for myself to get back to where i used to be mm -hmm. personally um and that's you know that's the reason why i haven't jumped into peds that's the reason why i compete with the wbff that's the reason why is that a goal of yours what's that the to compete and no i do compete in them with them already the but the, the to get WF. on the peds and to oh, no, no, maybe no, get no, no. i'm saying that like, to bigger stages and stuff like that no i don't i don't see myself competing like the on the olympia or something like that like nah it's not Good. a goal of mine <laughs> uh but like that's why i don't do peds that's that's why i compete with the wbf mm -hmm. everything I've, I've, I've explained overall um mm -hmm. that's how many competitions i've done it's because it's, it's a personal journey you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. it's a personal journey 100 percent. it's a grind and, it's a sport mm -hmm. it is a sport but also man the people i meet amazing people you influencers as well from all over the world you know and mm -hmm. and they're just you know you see these people sometimes you might look them at look at them as celebrities online but when you meet them in person they're just regular people you know what i mean yeah. and um i mean don't get me wrong there are some people that can't be full of themselves too but i've I read run, run into those type of people and that's them that's fine yeah. um but it's about why you, why why are you doing what you're doing? Why do you want to build a social media name? Why do you want to compete? Why do you, you know what I mean? And overall, for me, the reason why I compete, the reason why I uh, do what I do for business, or the reason why I compete mostly is because I just want a you know a good life for me and my girlfriend. And because you love it, you now, love the I fitness. love it. I love it, dude. It's a second language yeah. to me. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, this guy in high school was like, were you benching 300? I think? Nah, dude, no, I, I was very fit in high school. I just yeah. wasn't that strong, but I was very fit. I yeah, because I grew up boxing. You were and boxing. Like that. That's right. You mm -hmm. were very skinny. You always had a six pack. The only yeah. thing that changed was just more muscle. A little mass. bit more muscle. Yeah, that's it. Everything yeah. else stayed the same since I think ninth grade. Mm -hmm. Um, so he stuck with it. I didn't. Mm, you could tell the results. Yeah, the guy's in shape. Look at his social media page. I promise you, this guy here with his shirt off. He's he's looking pretty good, yeah. you know. Giving you flowers, best, man. but uh, I can tell you that much. You look better than me. I mean, you and I were both one fifty at one point. Now I'm like two oh five, in between two oh five to two oh ten. Right. Because I mean, stupid shit, losing weight. Stupid shit, losing weight. So, and overall, it's thing. about learning and, and implementing. Because when I started competing, I didn't have a coach. Mm -hmm. I just knew good nutrition. I knew how to exercise, so I just applied it. You know what I mean? I applied whatever I thought I knew or whatever I learned from somebody that was older than me and more wiser, and I always, always implement. If there's somebody that's doing what you want to do, pick mm -hmm. the brain, man. Pick the brain. That's my biggest thing. And that's what the show's about, though. man. Bringing guys like you, good experts that's been through the grind, been through the, the hustle, and knows what it takes to get there because they've seen the results. Mm -hmm. They've seen the process, right? Trust the process, right? Yeah. I man. mean, that's what I would say. I'm going to coach myself for, you know, 12 year old kids, 13 yeah, yeah. year old kids. And the one thing that really drives me nuts is they jump ship over a year. And I'm like, just like to another team or something? Yeah, or like two months, three months or whatever. And they don't see like the culture because it's just it's it's a whole nother story for a whole nother day. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that But I'm sure whenever some of these kids bring up some of their troubles, you know through experience how to how to kind of get how to help them understand yes. through your experience. Same thing I do mm -hmm. with fitness is no different coach is a coach it's about uh learning there's no difference from the coach of the new england patriots and the coach of the texans it's about how they teach how they put their teachings into right. their players or into their clients and help helping them understand and implement and be great too it's literally right. about how you 
how do you relay the information? That's all it is. Because we all know the delivery, getting, the delivery, the delivery, you know, yeah, the relationships. And we that all you know to get fit is good, good eating, exercise. Right. But Everybody about, knows that. But it's about how you relay that information. Right. right. And I'm all about simplicity and understanding even for myself. I want to be able to understand why that is the way it is <laughs> and understand it for myself so I can simplify it and then I can now apply it and then, you know, pass yeah. it down yeah so, you know? sometimes i read the room wrong even though i try because i'm old school bro like if you tell me i'm a fat ass i'm gonna take to heart and run mm -hmm. but some people when you call them fat they Those pull you to down. the side and they're like hey can you please not say that out loud yeah and i have that happen before um i'm not you know gonna state who or what mm -hmm. but you know because my old school mindset and the coaches and the hardcore people that i've had growing up my dad's hardcore my coaches were hardcore back in the day it's a new era it's a new you know age where people talk things out now and i'm just like you have a good trait of that right yeah. I, I didn't really pick that up until i started ha having to learn that because i lost a lot of good people because of that and i'm like man why, why are you like so i wouldn't say soft but like how are you not delivering it right because i'm a different person so right off the bat yeah sure. right off the so i noticed that as a coach that i am learning myself mm -hmm. that the delivery is everything yeah build it's that everything. build that relationship first and then once you're like comfortable then you can start calling them fat ass or a fucking slow <laughs> uh, you know what i mean yeah you gotta have that they, they know balance. you're right they know, right. they know where you're coming from but if you're right. just a total like, a stranger you're, you're coming at them yeah it's, I, you're right about that definitely reading the room mm -hmm. and filling it out um because that's happened to a, a client of mine when he was with a separate trainer mm -hmm. and that trainer called his son a or something like that and he didn't like that you know what i mean and it's because there's there was no develop there was no from that trainer to call the my client son of pussy um he obviously was coming from a motivational state right. but you know right. you don't know my kid like that yeah you know what i mean so uh, nowadays or i'll say in general is just read the room and, right. and know how to kind of get on people's level before you can start right. Kind of pushing them a certain way out you know honestly before i made those mistakes sometimes i already know what's gonna like even if the end result comes with an l i'm still gonna do it because i want to see the reaction out mm -hmm. of the person mm -hmm. you know i'm not taking that risk yeah. taking that risk i take a lot of risk and 75 percent of it kind of works you know i get to see who you are how do you respond when you get punched in the face mm -hmm. not literally but yeah metaphorically speaking mm -hmm. whenever push comes to shove how are you going to react to adversity right mm -hmm. so i like to risk it but with love right i'm not saying it as in like a jerk sometimes it might come off as a jerk but when i say stuff like that i want to see the type of reaction or what type of person you are by me pushing those buttons right off the bat hey you don't know me i don't know you who are you to tell me is it, tell me this who are you to tell me that but because i have such good history good background good knowledge and my training good you know, whatever, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Because I have good uh, experience, mm -hmm. right? Good experience. My background speaks for me. So therefore, they look at me crazy, but at the same time, they respect They know me. that there's going to be a, a positive they respect result. Me, yeah. You know, so I give off that, that, that feel, that, that aura that, hey, you're going to respect me because this is what my background says. And this is what I show, right? Right before I call them out on their bs i'll break it down and i'll play and i'll work somebody one of the kids i have good glove work i got good bat speed i know how to hit the ball this and this and that so they'll see that and they'll be impressed so therefore before i call them out i show them that i'm not going to call them out without letting them know that i can do it better than they can now if i was a guy that didn't know what the hell i was doing all i did was just talk then then it can come off the wrong yeah. way right but you have experience you know Ex where you're exactly at. just like you i'm sure that you can get to that relationship level because your experience speaks it for itself all you gotta do is just take off your shirt and the client's gonna be like all right i mm -hmm. guess you can call me a fat ass and you're right i am eating wrong right call them out on their shit you're right i had a bad weekend but it's all right i'm gonna call you out with love but let's get back on track exactly right so the last thing i want to touch on before we get out of here man we had a great conversation yeah is, for a fat ass like me trying to get back in shape what are some tips and advice besides the simple stuff right not just keep it clean keep it eat give me like a regiment right i'm 207 pounds how many you know I, i've heard something like you have to eat like 200 grams of proteins in a day per body weight. for per body weight mm -hmm. can you break that down for me how much more or less of a cup of rice that i need to eat or do i need to switch over just to whole foods like 
uh, you know, regular veggies, you know, stuff like that. Keep, keep away from the starchy carbs and get to the veggies from how much more fruit should I eat? How much more calories should I burn? How much should I intake and how much should I burn? So our bodies naturally burn about 1700 calories just to live. Us talking, we're burning calories, moving, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. So if we burn another five, 600 on a Stairmaster, right? Or 1700, five, you know, five, 600, we're at what? Uh, 22, I mean, 2,500 calories mm -hmm. to say overall through the Stairmasters and just kind of working out, lifting a little bit, 2,500. How much do we intake without feeling depleted, but feeling good and being that caloric deficit? Cause I'm big on caloric deficit, right? Mm -hmm. The less you eat, the more you work out, the more weight you're gonna burn. But I don't wanna feel like I'm gonna pass out. So like, you know, maybe like a little small wrap up of, hey, you're 200 pounds, what's your goal weight? How tall are you? You know, shit that you do yeah. for consultation, yeah, yeah, you understand, sure. you. Yeah. the body Simple. stuff. Maybe next time we can hit the little body yeah. thing, body fat scale, and then go from there. And what I need to do once a week to drop three pounds a week for the next five, six months. Okay, so number one, are you exercising? Yes. How many times a week? Three times a week. Three times a week. Is mm -hmm. that? This is my first consultation, guys. By the way, <laughs> is this uh, <clears throat> is it sports or is it uh, weight training? So it's a combination of both, right? I'll go play some basketball, but then I'll go lift some weights. Okay, so when you play basketball, how many times are you playing basketball? I'd say one out of uh, one time out of the week. Man, it's hard. Okay, no, it's, 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 it's hard scheduling for me. Things. You know. Um. Okay, how many times are you lifting weights? Uh, about two three times a week so two three times a week but i'll hit the stairmaster i'll, I'll hit stairmaster right, right, right. 10 10 minutes a day okay so so that's a oh, that calorie so you're hitting hard. so you're hitting you're doing the stairmaster 10 minutes a day yeah and you're doing weight training three times a week give or take yeah let's say two max two. minimum two yeah, minimum two yeah, minimum yeah. two okay. max three. so you got seven days a week mm -hmm. you're getting five days a week 10 minutes on the stairmaster four days uh three days out of the week on okay. the stairmaster out of seven days so right three days you're on the stairmaster mm -hmm. two days out of the seven days some weight you're, training you're doing some weight training mm -hmm. so you're being active you're working out technically you're, you're moving your body five times a day technically right yeah but i do it the same day right right right, uh, right okay so oh but you still you gotta separate the cardio and the weight training right because there's two different forms of exercise Ex okay so you're you're active right mm -hmm. now how many times a day are you eating Twice a day. Twice a day. <laughs> and you're doing Two big meals. You're, you're fasting, right? Fasting right now. And are I'm going to go eat a big ass meal right now. Are you committing to fasting or are you uh, open to different implementation? And it's, uh, the, it's about how you want to go about it. Right, 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 right. Uh, I just want to know what's more effective for me, right? And this is why we're kind so, of having this conversation. So, what you're telling me about your 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 Chipotle experience with golfing, that's those eating patterns are the reason why it's hard for you to lose weight because you're mm -hmm. eating so much and you're you're hung, you're so hungry and your cravings are so high that you just kind of don't even focus on or mindful of what you're doing. Okay. So, I think the biggest thing is to implement of breakfast. Okay. A light breakfast or a heavy breakfast. A balanced breakfast. Okay. So, a light breakfast. If you're on the go, you don't care about cooking. Protein shake and a piece of fruit. I would say it's a light breakfast okay. and a balanced breakfast. But if you have time to cook, then have yourself eggs, egg whites, eggs or egg whites or both, and some toast. Okay. Two two pieces of toast, maybe three pieces really, because not bread isn't. The, if you look at the macro, if you look at the macronutrients on bread, super fair. Very low in calories, very low in carbs. People just think bread is bad because that's just what we're all the gluten and shit. Well, that and, and that's what's been passed the down, and, and it's not that bad. So okay. any kind of bread or like okay. natural okay. bread. Okay. So there's bleach bread, there's sunbeam, which is fire, but you can't be eating that. No, honestly, any bread. If you look at the calorie intake, it's going to be between sixty to seventy calories and about thirteen grams of carbs per bread. Okay, so it's not too bad. So okay, uh, what do you like? Give me your carb choices for breakfast. Do you like do you like tortillas? Do you like oatmeal? Do you like uh, toast? What would you prefer? Man, I stay away from tortillas honestly, bro. Okay. Of that. So oatmeal uh, or bread. Oatmeal. But man, the thing about me is I get that brown sugar oatmeal. I gotta get plain oatmeal. I would say mm -hmm. plain oatmeal. Um, so you like oatmeal? Yes, I like. Oatmeal. You want it to taste good? Very good. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, 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 tastes good. it doesn't have to be the oatmeal from the package because that's where it's all sugar. Yeah, yeah. So do you like eggs? I do. I love eggs, bro. Cool. I cook shit out of eggs. Simple meal plan for you, dude. Simple meal plan. I would go with three eggs. In the morning? In the morning for breakfast. With yolk? With yolk. Okay. 
just keep it simple, three eggs, and then get yourself half a cup of uh, oats. Because if you put water in it or oat milk, it's going to fill up, right? What about the almond milk? Almond milk. Okay. Almond cool. milk's great. Perfect. Um, About a cup of almond milk. Because, dude, if you look at the almond milk macros, 30 calories per serving. Nothing. Jesus no Christ. carbs. Right? Anyway. A cup, right? Per serving is a cup? Mm -hmm. Oh, even better. Because a cup's And it makes it taste so good. So if you want your almond to taste good, put Splenda in it, bro. Really? As many packets as you feel you need for sweet. Really? And some cinnamon. I guarantee you're gonna fall in love like I did. Okay. Can I put some bananas in it? Um, or is you it can't. Too much sugar? It, it, no, it's fine. It, it's, it's not a bad. It, bananas are fine. Okay. Um, I would say add the bananas into it. But if you feel like you're not losing weight, take away the bananas. Bananas, because it's about taking away variables, right? Okay. Yeah. So simple Give breakfast. And take yeah. Every time. Simple. Okay. Simple. Simple. Uh, meal. Three, three eggs. eggs uh, half a cup. Half of a cup of oats, and then to make it taste good, Splenda and cinnamon. And right. some uh, and some bananas. Um, almond milk. Almond milk. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Simple. Meal number one. Is that so now? Quick question: Is it more effective to get your cardio workout in before that meal or after? More simple, simple. Cardio, the best I way to do it. The best way to do it is do it at your convenience. Get it done regardless. Okay. If you could do it first thing in the morning, great. If you can't, don't feel bad about getting it done at some point of the day. Like right now, I have I had three two meals in I'm, and I did some weight training. Ooh, you know, okay. and so I'm going to go guy? do cardio probably around four o'clock today or something like that. I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go for a walk. Yeah. It, is it not as effective because I'm not doing fast? No, I'm still right. getting it done. Okay. You're still going to expend. So don't don't worry about the science on post workout cardio, uh, pre workout cardio. Just More as long as it cardio, just, and just stuff get it, like just that. get it done. Get your body moving. Right. You hear that, guys? Just get it done. Just get it done. Just get okay. it done. Um, so then after that, let's say my day starts. So then you'll have to eleven o'clock. So you'll have your two meals that you typically have. The only thing different for you is going to be the first meal. Okay. Everything else should be about the same. Now. Okay, what is your favorite protein source? Give me your top two, dude. I I'll I'll, I'll kill some chicken, and I love steaks. So, okay, but I'll I'll kill some chicken. So chicken, so you got let's say chicken and steaks, right? Mm -hmm. A balanced meal is a protein, a carbohydrate, and a vegetable balanced meal, right? Okay. So for meal number two. What would be your protein source, chicken or steak? I think I'm just going to stick to lean white meats like chicken. So chicken, okay. Yeah, cool. the whole time. So boom. So meal number two, chicken. Carb sources. Give me your top two carb sources. Uh, say veggies. Like no, maybe that's, that's a vegetable. Not, that's not a carb? Uh, I, I mean, would say, it's a low intake carb, but uh, it's a carb. Mm, uh, low carb. Carbs, a carb that can be misconstrued as a vegetable would be like a potato. Okay. So, um, sweet potatoes. I love some sweet potatoes. So sweet potatoes and what else? Give me another carb. Uh, I guess some dirty rice. Dirty rice. So overall, <laughs> just regular rice. Yeah, yeah dirt, white rice. Ri dirty rice falls under the category as rice. Okay. Because there's so many variations of rice. Oh, you can do rice. basmati. You can do jasmine. Pasta. Pasta is a good pasta carb. Pasta is a good carb, but for weight loss, you no, would want to. Okay. Yeah, you okay. want to make sure you limit weight. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because you so can, no pasta, boys. I would just and, limit. And I would limit it. I just would limit it for sure. And I won't say no. Like, don't do it because you can. You can incorporate it, but you want to eat more and feel satisfied, right? Mm -hmm. So your carb sources, your favorite carb source is sweet potato and rice in any yeah. variation, right? Okay. So you chose chicken breast and sweet potato or white rice or rice. Uh, white rice. We'll, we'll stick to the white rice. So chicken breast and white rice. Okay. okay. And what vegetable source do you like? Ah uh, man, I like me those steamed, like. Steamed veggies like carrots and mm -hmm. peas. And Perfect. I like you asparagus. Could, I you can buy it like a variety pack like yeah, that. Or asparagus. Steam it. So, what would you choose? Mixed vegetables or asparagus? Man, I, I feel like mixed vegetables get me more full, and okay. asparagus is just little mm -hmm. little bites here and there. But I mean, some grilled asparagus, that shit's fire. Mm -hmm. if, if you saute oh, them. Yes, exactly. Saute. Okay, saute vegetables is where I'm at. And that's perfect. Again, yeah. make sure you spray, not oil. Okay. And you can put lemon pepper on them. Can so, I put some soy sauce in it? A little light. Uh, if you do, uh, I will go with the low sodium. Okay. Because, right. again, okay. you want to save the calories, right? Sure. So, right now, meal number two, you got chicken breast, sweet potato, and what will be your vegetable? It's sauteed. Sauteed, mixed, uh, or? Mixed. Okay. Yeah, we'll do some So, mix. boom. Meal number two, chicken, sweet potatoes, sauteed, uh, mixed vegetables. Well, let's do the rice. Chicken, rice. No, we said rice. My bad. Yeah. Chicken, chicken rice, rice, mixed vegetables. Okay. Boom. That's your second. One meal. cup. 
one cup of 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 the rice and one cup of the vegetables okay because mm -hmm. you don't want to eat too on, much rice honestly with the vegetables you could do like two cups man because oh really vegetables oh, yeah, yeah vegetables yeah yeah, yeah they're low the rice very, you gotta keep it mm -hmm. you minimum at least one cup right just for now right and with the protein if you don't want to measure your food just use the palm of your hand that's what for, i'm thinking that's four, four ounces size. right about four to six ounces yeah perfect which is a good enough six ounces of chicken plenty of protein right there dude okay so meal number one Three, uh, three eggs. Three eggs. A half cup of oatmeal with <coughs> almond milk. Make it the way you want to taste with a banana. Okay. Perfect. Meal number two: chicken breast, cup of rice, and as much vegetables as you feel. Okay. Or at least two cups. Then meal number three: to what protein source? It could be the same, or it could be a different. What protein uh, source do you man, want? you know what? I'll I like some ground turkey. So ground turkey, okay. And what a part? lettuce wrap. And lettuce wrap as your vegetable. What would you want your carb source to be? It, it could be it rice. It could be it potatoes. Okay to say rice again. It could be rice again. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't you can you can have the same meal in all three meals. It's just it, to keep it. Okay. It's about getting your protein and your carbs and your vegetables. Ah, okay, see what I'm okay, saying? Okay. You can swap them around, or you can keep it the same. Okay. You can have chicken and oat, I mean eggs and oatmeal for throughout the whole day. And same you know? thing for chicken and rice and veggies just, just for the next swabbing. three just like your outfit you your outfit you yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, thing your, same thing with your nutrition this and this is how here. i this, like how how my, this is how my clients uh build Artistry. their meal plans yeah without me because if i told you hey gabe this is what you gotta eat and you're gonna be like oh, okay this is gonna be a little different but if i'm telling you what food sources do you enjoy Ooh, then okay. this is how you put together your nutrition plan the yeah. formula is protein carb vegetables now you pick what you want to plug into there Okay. And that's how you build your meal plan. So ground beef, rice, and uh, iceberg lettuce. That was your third meal. Mm -hmm. Boom. Just for now, keep that meal plan as your as your regimen, along with your stairmaster and your weight training. Now keep that going for at least two weeks and see how your body changes. If you're if you're seeing results like you're dropping weight, mm -hmm. then keep going. Okay. If you're not seeing results, the first thing I would change is your output variable. So if you can do another day of weight training, add that compared to changing your food. You know okay. what I'm saying? So your food's consistent, but the only thing you're changing is your movement. Gotcha. So you change the movement without changing your food, then you get more results. And then you keep going into your results stall, and then you can start changing things with your food. Maybe I should take away less carbs, mm -hmm. or maybe I should add... More, uh, more exercise or more exercise usually when if it's the food you're going to be changing you will just kind of don't cut out your carbs but just kind of like if you're going from a cup go from a cup to three-fourths gotcha small okay. little changes because mm. if you go from like oh i'm gonna take away a full cup of rice and you're gonna be hungrier yeah you know what i mean but okay, if you do okay. little incremental changes it'll yeah. take you far uh it'll 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 take you further along compared to doing quick abrupt changes gotcha and then you're hating life you know what i mean <laughs> so <laughs> that's why many people quit diets exactly and exercise exactly and they go back to their and that's how lifestyle. i help, that's how i help people understand the nutrition what protein do you enjoy what carbs do you enjoy and then this can you let's uh, if you don't have three meals already mm -hmm. then let's get in the routine of three meals okay plug in your exercise be consistent and see how your body is for two weeks at least two weeks and if there's no changes then we, then you need to make a change in for number one in your movement or your nutrition whichever one is easier on you got it you know what i mean got i'd rather it. i'd rather add more workouts than take away food because i want to keep eating you know okay, what I mean? so work out harder give, no, give yourself harder, just just add an maybe add go from 10 minutes on the stairmaster to, to 15, 15 minutes. that's what i was thinking exactly. like add it go harder mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. or maybe you know do more reps on a on a set you know yeah um, you know uh my goal is to get i wouldn't say shredded i don't want to have a dad bod i mean eventually but we're not there yet but i want to get to the point where i'm you said 180 you're at yeah i want to get to 180 185 solid with a shrunken stomach mm -hmm. right you know that's solid Sorry. not too thick there you go. not too thick uh but not too skinny mm -hmm. i want to be in a good weight so you got to keep your make sure when you're weight training you're keeping it as heavy as you can with the right amount of reps that you're properly doing so okay. if you're doing 15 reps make sure you're doing a good amount of weight that's heavy for 15 reps not easy for 15 reps you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so always challenge your muscles by going okay. as heavy as you can that's how you hold on to your muscles. will you get too big would you get too stiff i mean i don't want to be stiff. i want to be if you're in order for you to be in order for you to not feel stiff you got to make sure that you're getting your mobility working like stretching or okay. things like that still got to do that if you, you know lifting weights helps burn more calories for sure yeah and it helps with fat loss 
Um, so that's just something you got to do on the side of exercise. Just, you know, whenever you're chilling at the house, just stretch your hips, things like that. That'll keep you less stiff. Um, but overall, yeah, just establish your three meals, be consistent with it. And then if you need to, if you need to change things, change small variables, either add another workout day or add five more minutes to your Stairmaster. I would always go with the exercise first before you start editing. Taking away your but honestly, okay. I, I think your biggest flaw is you're missing a, a first meal because the, the, the first, uh, your first meal is a big one. And then you probably don't eat for like another six to eight hours and it's yeah. another big meal. And you know, I'm not gonna lie. I love to fast, bro. I love it. And yeah. I just love being empty and feeling lighter i don't know what it is it's not good for performance but i mm -hmm. love that feeling in the morning so yeah thank you so much for your time like i said that was a great you know conversation i enjoyed the plan one. uh yeah i enjoyed it too it was really fun getting to know you know who you are and stuff that you're going through since i haven't seen you in quite a while yeah, man, for know? sure no yeah so you know next time there will be a next time i guarantee you that we're gonna get more in depth of other stuff like the pds and this and that and i guess you know more of uh how they got started or what motivated you to start doing this whatever whatever the case yeah. may be but you know i still want to pick your brain but we got the overall concept of what you got going on and something that i can give your flowers you know give you respectfully if i can give Appreciate you some shine it. more than welcome same to thing for you man i mean i'm excited i honestly when you reached out to me, I was like, hell yeah, man. Because I know a podcast is just a good, it is a good conversation. Good conversation. I'm away from my phone, engaging mm -hmm. in good, in good convos. And I saw your setup when you had, when you had promoted it. And so I was like, you know, yeah, of course, man. Yeah, I wasn't going to be a boo-boo ass, you know, uh, podcast being in the room and closet. Yeah. And I know what you're you like, got going on. I know what you're pursuing. And man, mm -hmm. if, if, uh, if I can help you in any way with that, like more power to you, man. And, yeah, and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. north side to north side, like. Let's just grow together, you know. Yeah. And do this, you know. A couple of Northside kids from Houston, Texas. Oh, yeah. Trying to make it big. <laughs> I mean, I've been doing this for seven years. I think you've been on the grind for about five to six I've years. Been in business for nine years. Yeah. Nine years. Yeah. Okay. So I've been making videos for about seven years now. And I'm just like, man, I need to do something with it. Mm -hmm. I gotta be consistent. If the time, if I don't do it now, then it probably never happened. I'm getting older, plus my metabolism, like you said, is gonna slow down. So I need to figure out a plan. But I want to be, I guess, I wouldn't call it a guinea pig, but the, the person that gets to show that it is possible to get it done, oh, yeah. right? No. With the crazy, busy lifestyle that we got going on. I got about, you know, I got a job. I got a business that I help out with a person, you know, training kids and this and that. And, but I still got to get it in mm -hmm. anyway, anyhow. So I'm not going to make any excuses. And I want this to be the platform for people to understand that it is possible that you can get it done as long as you get it in. Have the determination you don't need an incentive to get in shape just do it for yourself mm -hmm. and here's the way how to do it exactly right there's not many people that talk about how to do it right there's always youtube videos of people working out and this and that but this is more of a lifestyle conversation and i appreciate so much from the bottom of my heart for you taking the time out of your busy life to come and talk about this and i want everybody to know that you're there for them and i'm there for them as well of course, of course. so if we can help out the people shit we're all for it's it, what it's right? all about man simplifying it and making it happen yeah do you have any merch or anything like that do no i don't no mm -mm. nothing like that no okay. just more if you want to reach out to me if you need help with uh anything in your fitness journey socials instagram rocky.rdz or facebook me yeah Aaron rodriguez i'll put it somewhere oh, down yeah, here sure. so that way they can I'll take a happy book to help and out anybody a link below and stuff like that so uh i mean i got some merch coming out pretty soon maybe i can get you it's not gonna be that for sure that That's was cool, just man. a little whatever yeah whatever whatever yeah Designs. maybe i can get you in some shorts or a shirt that you can wear before and then just tear it up i don't know whatever you want to do know whatever you want to do but uh appreciate you brother yeah, man. thank you for your time man till next time of course peace brother bye guys later